My friends, at the beginning of our heart-rendering drama, we see a moderate drinker. Later, we watch his downfall, which results in his embarrassment and the embarrassment of his family. Ultimately, we observe his despair and his attempt to commit suicide. He's going to kill himself. Never was there such a thrilling and affecting performance. After the performance, those who wish to sign the pledge not to drink hereafter can do so at the box office. Does the dark, sinister forces receive their just reward? Or is virtue crowned in everlasting glory? Wait and see. You are invited to applaud the noble characters in their portrayal. And at the same time, to hiss. Oh, I, that was me. I, I thought I was getting the, I mean, I was, there was given. <laughs> you can hiss the villain who plots the ruin of our heroine as well as the worthy characters who struggle for justice. I thank you. No, not me. The man with the big mustache. That's the... I... Excuse me, I... your father said when he passed away. Ah, oh, he was a good provider. He left us this lovely home with its drooping arbors of grapes, its heavily laden fruit trees, its garden of fragrant flowers, a cow, and a mortgage. Ah, yes. It is true that this cottage is very dear to us, but father, owed Mr. Middleton quite a sum of mortgage on this house. And while we haven't been bothered, it is the general belief now that Mr. Middleton is dead, his son will foreclose. If he wants the money, there is nothing we can do about it. But I shudder oh, to think that you, my beloved child, will be exposed to the thousands of temptations faced by a penniless orphan. <laughs> Hark, who knocks? Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. Good morning, sir. Mary, bring Mr. Cribbs the comfy chair. Thank you, my dear young lady. So we meet once again. A sad misfortune has befallen all of us in the passing of Mr. Middleton. Many will have reason to think so, I fear. Yes, yes, you're right. Mr. Middleton was a fine man. He was my best friend. He always took my advice. I was his lawyer. Was he not very rich? When times were good, but bad speculations, investments and false friends took their toll, alas. Mr. Middleton was very kind to us, and in our own misfortune did not press his claims. As his lawyer, we look to you. I understand you are a man who... Has a sympathetic heart for the unfortunate. That is the reputation that I have. But have you any thoughts 
Any prospects of paying the mortgage? Then it is too true. We will have to leave our lovely cottage and garden. Well, what can I do? I pleaded with young Mr. Middleton, but he wouldn't listen. He said he needed the money. He is a young man, somewhat given to excesses, I fear. Oh, but pardon me, my dear Miss Mary. I would not call up a blush upon the cheek of modesty by mentioning the name of Edward Middleton. I remember him as a lad. He was a bright blue-eyed boy with flaxen hair, tall for his age. Well, madam, <coughs> business is business. I'm a plain man, Mrs. Wilson. Some people say that I'm too blunt, but I... You mean we will have to leave this cottage, sir? Not immediately, my dear young lady, but it would be well to be prepared. You impose a severe task on us, my good sir. Bear up, madam. Bear up. If I may suggest, there are ways in which Mary may earn her living in New York City. A fine, upstanding woman like your daughter may always find a profitable occupation. Think it over. I reiterate, think it over. Comfort, my daughter, comfort. Mr. Cribbs may be our friend in this hour of misfortune. He appears to be a man of feeling. But before depending on him, we will make one last appeal to this young man, Mr. Edward Middleton. You have the money in your purse? Yes, yes, I have, Mother. Thirty dollars, the sum we saved to buy coal for this winter. This will pay part of the mortgage. When Mr. Edward Middleton sees we are trying to pay the debt, he may relent. You turn pale, Mary. What ails you? Dear Mother, it is nothing. I'll be all right. It's just that I... I fear to meet this young man. Mr. Cripps has told us how wicked he is. I... I fear the worst. Have courage. Do not enter his house when you tell him his sad story and give him the money. Still, no matter how wild a youth may be, no gentleman ever insulted a friendless and unprotected girl. But stay in the vestibule. Well, thank heavens that interview of mock sympathy and charity with the Wilsons is over. Oh, how I hated old Middleton. And oh, how I hate young Edward Middleton. And if he has any children, oh, how I'll hate them too. <laughs> I flatter myself I did some pretty good acting for the old widow Wilson. How do you do? But the widow and her daughter must leave the cottage. That will suit my purpose best. To get them out, sell it, and pocket the profit. But the daughter is quite a pretty wench. Ah, here she comes now. I'll hide behind yon tree, where I can watch her. I shall soon reach Mr. Edward Middleton's mansion on Yon Hill. In a few moments, I shall face this dissipated young collegian. Such a man can have no pity on a poor, defenseless girl like me. Hark, a man approaches. I wonder if it is Mr. Edward Middleton. How shall I ever have the courage to speak to him? I had better wait till he reaches his house. She's gone. bird must have fallen from its mother's nest. I shall place it here where its mother may find it. Good morning, good morning, you son of my old friend. I've been looking for you. Good morning, Mr. Cribbs. Any friend of my father's is a friend of mine. Nobly said. I see your father before me as I look at you. He will be easier prey than his father was. 
You said you wanted to see me about something. Yes. I want to see you about the cottage that Mrs. Wilson and one daughter are occupying. The mortgage remains unpaid, and I have an opportunity of disposing of it. When last we talked of the cottage, Mr. Cribbs, I did not know it was occupied by a poor widow and her lovely daughter. Age and tears wait for no one. They have lived there for many years, and my father regarded them highly. There are places they can go. There is the poor house for people like Enough, that. Enough, Mr. Cribbs. I would not think of depriving them of their home, a home that is as dear to them as the apple of their eye. I would not think to send them away from the flowers they have reared. But what of the fences that are broken? What of the garden gate that's off its hinges? What of the limbs of the old birch tree broken down for firewood? And the back windows that are broken and stuffed with a black hat? Cease, Mr. Cribbs. All this has been explained to me. My very good friend William Dalton has told me the entire story. The trees were broken by idle schoolboys. As for the hat in the window, it was the hat of Mr. Wilson, deceased. It was the hat of a man. Can as much be said of yours, Mr. Cribbs? You are being very unreasonable, sir. Good day. Good day. I'm sorry I offended him. After all, he was a friend of my father's. My poor father regarded him highly. He always took his advice, but it was invariably unfortunate when he did so. I beg your pardon. I understand you better now. You are right. The daughter is a fine girl. Sparkling eyes, dimples, ruby lips. <laughs> I was young myself once. Have you seen her? Never. Explain yourself, Mr. Cribbs. Mother and daughter grateful, free access to the domicile at all times. <laughs> Love in the cottage, eh? Cribbs, do you realize this girl has no father, no brother to protect her? Just a wild flower. Yes, that's it. A wild flower growing in an open meadow. A garden without a fence. All you have to do is to step right in. I knew an old man once, and had that old man heard you utter such foul sentences to his son, and had he heard you tell me to enter like a wolf, this fold of innocence, and tear from her mother's arms the hope of her old age, he would have seized you by the throat and dashed you prostrate to the ground, as too foul a carcass to ever walk erect and mock the name of man. That man, sir, was my father. But Mr. Middleton, Sir, leave me. Be gone. But, sir... Your hot, lascivious breath is not fit to mingle with the sweet odor of these fragrant flowers. Ah, I see you like butter. Your raven voice does not harmonize with the warblings of the birds, which sing with praise to that power that looks in horror on your brutal mind. Mr. Edward Middleton, sir. Mr. Middleton, you're allowing temptation to turn you from your duty to your father. After all, business is business. Young lady, you will rue the day that you ever crossed the path of Silas Crib. So this is the farmer's daughter? The widow's daughter, sir. And here is part of the mortgage money we owe you. My child, then you have not overheard my talk with Mr. Cribbs. I told him that you and your mother... May remain in the cottage? Oh, sir. Is that why we should withhold this money from you? It is now our double pleasure to pay you. For we recognize in you a noble benefactor. Be assured that the remainder will be paid as soon as these hands may earn it. Nay, nay, dear child, keep it as a portion of your dowry. Oh, sir. I have spoken plainly to Cribbs. Shall I now speak plainly to you? It is not our fault that the fences are broken. When my poor father lived, it was not so. When that vile man spoke to me of your charms, I heeded him not. There are plenty of pretty girls about. But I have since discovered what I have heard before. Something that is deeper than beauty itself. The charm that Cribbs is incapable of appreciating. Your charm is of mental excellence, noble sentiment, and purity. 
These are the beauties that render you conspicuous above all the maidens I have seen. These are the charms that make captives of men. I speak plainly, but I speak honestly. When I speak of your keeping this money as a portion of your dowry, need I say into whose hands I would like to have it fall? To affect not to understand you, sir, would be an idle return for such kindness as yours. I sometimes walk in the vicinity of your cottage and... Should you pass by and not stop, then... Then what, dear Mary? I should think that you had forgotten where we lived. Little did I think that dear cottage contained such a precious jewel. comes William Dalton's half-crazy sister. She knows too much to suit me. Why doesn't she keep out of my way? Her voice haunts me. In her, I see the image of the boy that she was engaged to. Little does she know that it was because of me that he died in a drunken stupor. And that because of that, <laughs> she became lightheaded. He's a fine man, he is. Aha. Uh -huh. He lives in the brick house yonder. But there's the will. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, yes, the will. Uh-oh. Go home, Hazel, go home. Edward and Mary will be wed today. Can you tell me why they always weep at weddings? Is it for joy? I used to weep when I was joyful. But my wedding dress is all mildewed. So we had to put the wedding off until another day. There's the wheel. Uh-oh. The wheel. Uh-oh. The wheel. Uh-oh. The wheel. Uh-oh. 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 Confusion! Get you gone, or I'll... Why, you foreman, you would strike my helpless little sister. If I wasn't afraid of losing my temper, I'd break every bone in your black beetle body, or my name's not... William Dalton. You will rue this day, William Dalton. This is a plain case of assault and battery. I'll have you put behind gray stone walls. You'll put me behind gray stone walls. pronounce you man and wife. Go ahead, kiss her. You're married now, you know. May I? Edward. A toast to the bride. A toast to the bride, happiness. I hope this ain't got a kick in it. Of course you're speaking just, my good friend William. For liquor in no form has ever wet my lips, either for pleasure or medicinal purposes. And may I add, the lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. I was only trying to make a joke. Things of that nature, my dear William, are not meant for jest. Shall we dance?
not know you had an invitation. I promised your father that I would be present when you took unto yourself a wife to drink your health. Cribs, my father was not a drinking man. Only on nuptial occasions. Tis an old Middleton tradition, been going on for 400 years. Have you never heard? Oh, I know. Why, when your Aunt Rebecca was married, you were but a fair-haired boy. Don't you remember? I have never tasted liquor, Mr. Cribs. That's what puts me in a quandary. I wonder if you dare carry on the tradition. From what I've heard of the fiery liquid, it may choke me. That is not the danger. Tis the will to take a drop and leave it alone. To know when to stop, as your father did. Anything my father did, I can do. Spoken like a man, Edward. Are you sure this is a Middleton tradition? On my honor. To the future that I see ahead of you. There, I did it. Edward, you are a man. But do not take another. That is where the danger lies. Cribs, my friend. You're positively insulting. Do you think that I, a man of integrity, honor, and social position, would allow a bottle to dominate my very existence? Watch. There, you see, tis nothing. In my opinion, the power of rum is greatly exaggerated. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Edward, our guest. Oh, good day, Mr. Cribbs. Mrs. Middleton. What is that odor? I, uh, I spilled the vinegar, dear. First a drink, and then a lie. Progress. Progress. From Cousin Lucy. Oh, Edward. Edward. Edward, you've been drinking. <gasps> A lie. Tis false. The cursed stuff is running through my veins, controls my tongue, makes me say things. And how should you know about it? To know the taste of liquor and on lips. Mother, you kiss him. Tell me that I am wrong. Brandy! Rum. And what matter? I am a man, and my father drank before me on nuptial occasions. Edward, don't raise your voice to me. If you have fallen, I will raise you up. I have not fallen. I am standing in the full force of my manhood, erect. Edward, this is not you talking. It's John Barleycorn. When you have reached your senses, you will find room. Edward, control yourself. You are in no condition to enter the chamber of the bride. Good morning, Mrs. Middleton. Good morning, William. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. Good morning, Uncle William. Good morning, Julia. Seen anything of Edward Middleton lately? Why, I haven't seen my old friend for some time. He's been very busy lately, I understand. That may be your impression. What do you mean? He ain't spending all his time at the tavern for nothing. You mean Edward is drinking again? Brandy. 
handy, landlord. Two fingers. Another glass. Ah, Mr. Middleton, you here? I've never been here before, except on business. I'll leave it to the landlord. How long since you've seen me? Why, Squire, it must be full ten years. It was the day Cy Morgan built his barn. The day I saw you digging in the woods. Digging? Digging in the woods? Can it be that he saw me bury the genuine Middleton will? I must get him out of town. Ah, yes. I was merely picking daisies. Come, Edward, a drink. A whiskey. Whiskey be it, then. Come, everybody, step up and have a drink with Krebs and me. Come on, have one on me. Why don't you join us? Don't be a snob. I drink when I'm dry, and what I drink, I pay for. Well, you needn't be impertinent. I don't want anything to do with you. Be off. You're drunk. Death and fury. Drunk, am I? I'll teach you manners. It serves them right. Quarrelsome young fool. The place was quiet enough until he came in. Disturbing respectable citizens. Have you seen Edward? Mercy, what is this? Blood. Blood on his forehead. Edward, Edward, speak to me, say something. Oh, his poor wife and poor old sick Mrs. Wilson. What is the matter? Where am I? Edward, don't you know me? It's I, William, poor William, who's come to take you home. The light dawns upon me. Where have they all gone? Where is Cribs? Where is my friend, Cribs? Was Cribs here with him? Why, yes. The squire was here for a short spell. What is the matter with my head? Blood! I must have slipped and fallen. You had a row with Stevens, the coach driver. A row? Stevens said you were drunk. You attempted to hit him, and he knocked you down. Oh, if I ever get a hold of that fellow Stevens, I'll give him something to smell that's nastier than peaches, or my name ain't... William Dalton. Come, Edward. But who is going to pay for the drinks? Oh, I'll go sand your sugar and water your whiskey, you old corkscrew. Oh, if I'd only died before I'd seen this. Oh, shame, shame, shame. So far, my scheme is working admirably. I know Edward's weakness. He will not stop short of madness or oblivion. However, I fear his wife. She has too much influence over him. Hark, someone approaches. It is Edward Middleton. Little did my friend William Dalton know when I entered the apothecaries, there was a back door. I shall not face my family like this. Just a little sip. A very little will revive and strengthen me. No one sees. No one knows my hiding place. There must be one drink left. Just a very little sip. Ah, it's better. The arch cunning of a drunkard. Glorious liquor. Why did I rail against thee? <laughs> I can face them now. Why, Edward, what means this? Tempter be gone. Do not pretend your ignorance. Were you not there when that vile fray occurred? Did you not desert me? As a living man, I know not what you mean. Twas business that called me away. I left you jovial and merry with your friends. Friends? The drunkard's friends? Yes, you may be speaking the truth. My brain wanders. 
I shall go home. Ah, misery, would I were dead. Ah, poo poo, misery, wish you were dead. Why, your cottage is worth at least $500. Only yesterday, Farmer Anton asked me how much could be bought for. Bought for? Cribs! I'm sorry, uh, it was merely a suggestion. Do you see that smoke curling up amongst the trees? It was the very day I was born that that cottage was first inhabited. Do you know who lives there now? Uh, yes, you. Where are you going? Home. Home to my sorrowing wife, to her dying mother, to my unfortunate child. Ah, no, you must not go home thusly. Come to my house and I will give you a little something that will cheer you up. Well, I... I... Do you distrust me? I wonder. You know that I'm your best friend. Well, just this once. He's a goner. My mother will never survive the night. And Edward has not yet returned home. And when he does come, how will he be? Alas, alas, my dear lost husband. Oh, it is all too horrible. If I could only reach that great philanthropist, Frederick Healy, he might save him. Mother dear, what makes you cry? Do not tell your father. No, Mother, if you wish me not to. Oh, this is too much. I'm going to see your grandma now. Have mercy. Support me in this terrible trial. Poor dear mother. I didn't tell mother, but I think father takes too much medicine. How is grandma, mother? Near the end of her earthly troubles. She lies in broken slumber. But little Julie must not be F-R-I-G-H-T-E-N-E-D. I'm not frightened, Mother. My intuition tells me Edward has been drinking. What is that? It's Father, and he's chopping down the cherry tree. Julia, darling, how does he look? He looks like George Washington. Wine curses and a guinea gold, aye, aye. Wine curses and guinea gold, aye, aye. Good heavens, what will the neighbors think? I've had a glorious time, old Cribs and I. Dearest. Why should I be silent? I'm not a child. My mother, Edward, my dear mother. Heavens, wrath on my hard heart, I forgot. How is she? Worse, Edward, worse. And I am part of the cause. Father, dear father. Go away, child. I have a cold. <laughs> bless you, my dear Julia. Bless you. I'm a beast. Mary, remember the cherry tree by the arbor? Yes, Edward, I do. Well, I slipped against it as I passed by. My father planted it when I was just a boy. It has grown with my growth. Just now I seized an axe and chopped it to the ground. Why should it flourish when I am lost forever? Why should it lift its head to heaven when I am prostrate? Mother. Edward, my mother. Mary. Horror. Death in the house. And I am the cause. No, Father, no! I cannot bear this. Let me fly from here. Edward, dear Edward, do not leave me. I will work, slave, anything. But don't abandon me in misery. Don't desert your child and me, husband. Call me not your husband. Curse me as your destroyer. Loose me. Leave me. Madness is my strength. My brain is liquid flame. Oh, 
I thought I told you to get out of here. Now get going. I wonder where that worthless vagrant could have wandered to. Ever since he came to New York, thanks to his ravenous appetite for liquor, he has been going rapidly to ruin. If only I could get him to commit some crime, I could fill my pockets and ensure his complete destruction. Ah, here he comes with two worthless companions. Caution, caution. My last cent is gone. I need a drink. You wait here a spell. Joe and I'll take a turn down to Cross Street. We'll get some money somewhere. Well, be quick then. This burning thirst consumes me. Me too. Come on, go. Ah, Edward, fancy seeing you here. Yes, Cribs, what there is left of me. Oh, I don't think you've changed much, although you might be better for a stitch or two at the elbows. <laughs> Not much privacy here, is there? I hardly dare to ask if you have seen them. Your wife and child? Oh, they're very well. Very well. They are better off without me. She's sorry for you, but I'm sure she thinks of you. I would like to see you become a respectable member of society. Respectable? But, Krebs, how can one become respectable without a cent in his pockets or a clean garment on his wretched carcass? <laughs> this... <clears throat> this is my opportunity. There are more ways than one of getting even with misfortune. If the world treats you badly, be avenged upon the world. But how, Cribs? How? You see this piece of paper? It is a check for $5,000. You are an excellent penman. You have but to write the signature of Frederick Healy, and you can laugh at poverty. What? A forgery on that brilliant and noble philanthropist? The orphan's benefactor, the friend of all unfortunates. To suggest such a thing proves you to be a villain and a coward. I must be low indeed when you dare propose such a dastardly act to my father's son. Wretched as I am, by the world despised, shunned and neglected by my friends. I would sooner perish than cause my dear child to blush for her father's crime. Here, Edward, get a drink. Take back your base bribe. So you spurn my silver. You'll think better of it when you're starving. I must have liquor. I must have liquor. Drink or two. Brandy, brandy, brandy. Mr. Healy, please help me find my friend Edward Middleton. Let me have a little blow, please. Oh, gin, gin. I know you've rescued scores of men from the demon rum. A little blow, please. Oh, nurse, don't write any matches around here. <clears throat> Blow, please, blow. Whoa, Jamaica rum, 10 years old. I knew it right away. How did you have to take up drinking, my good man? Don't fall down now. You'll be all right. Shall we find those railroad bonds? No, no, no. Don't, you know railroad bonds are no good now. They're no good at all. Railroad bonds. You want some? Go lie Mr. down. Mr. Healy. Someplace. Will you? Don't bother me. McGillicuddy, sir. Bourbon. Uh -huh. Right. How long? Three weeks. Three weeks. McGill? Why, Mr. Healy, you're giving him liquor. Well, I always do. I give him for the first six weeks. They never drink after that. Never. We use an awful lot of liquor around here. Here, hold that, please. Buy me some good distillery stock. Oh, well, hello. How are you? <laughs> Nothing like combining business with pleasure. Haven't I seen your face before somewhere? Mr. Healy. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, very sad case. Been drunk for nine weeks. Can't do a thing with him. Must be a kitchen drinker, I guess. <laughs> All right, 
what? <laughs> what about my friend, Mr. Middleton, if I find him? All right, Mr. Seagram, give him a number. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, think nothing of it. If you take a drink too freely, try the cure of Frederick Healy. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Bless you, sir. Yes, you were right. He does appear intoxicated. I'm not nearly done with my work. I promise to have the sweater finished by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then, my child, I will get 50 cents for my work, and you shall have food. Oh, dear mother, I am so cold. No, mother, eat the shawl. You are cold, too. I will wait till morning. Then I can warm myself at Mrs. O'Brien's fireplace. Lass, where is he on a night like this? In vain have I looked for him. Where is my poor, wretched heart? Terribly hungry. In the morning I will have money. No. No, my child will wake and find her bread gone. I will not rob my darling. Dear mother, take this shawl. You are cold. Heaven be praised that I did not eat that bread. Two o'clock and all's well. be at this hour. Oh, should it be Edward? Come in. Pardon my intrusion at this untimely hour, Mrs. Middleton, but friends are welcome at all times and seasons, eh? So you persist in remaining in these miserable quarters. You know very well my reason for staying. Have you brought tidings of Edward? I repeat that your accommodations are not of the best. Where would you have me go? You know very well I cannot return to the village until I find Edward. What a strange infatuation. What do you mean? I mean that there are plenty of women not so respectable who are willing to receive the attentions of wild young men like him. You dare speak thusly of that child's father. Shh. Do not awaken her. These things exist when there are wantons of one sex and drunkards of another. Sir! Shh. You slander my husband. This cannot be. Though he may be poor, forsaken, reviled and friendless, I shall continue to respect and love him. You are very proud, considering all circumstances. But come, my dear, I forgive you. I like you when you show a little spirit. You are young, and beautiful, and your husband is not worthy of your trust. I am rich, and I have a real affection for you. Come with me. You wretch! Ha! You have proven yourself to be a slanderer to affect your own vile purpose. My dear, come now, me proud beauty. Aha! At last I have you in me power, helpless and alone. Help! Help! <laughs> Just in the nick of time. Well, Squire, what do you take for your rotten carcass? I've been ocean to play Yankee Doodle on your britches. Be off, you vermin, before I come at you like a steam engine. Chuck a chuck, chuck a chuck, chuck a chuck, and give you a good paddling. I'll be revenged if there's law or justice. 
be gone. I think he has fallen. Well, I'm not drunk, I tell you. Oh, I'll tell it to the judge. You were drunk last night, but you had time to sober up. Say you don't want to buy a pie, but I don't want that one. Well, what kind of pie do you want? Well, I got the just the pie. Good officer, loose my friend. He is a noble character. Oh, this would be a terrible blow to my noble father. Tarry, officer, and let me plead in behalf of the friend of my boyhood. Will you get out of my way? I haven't got time to fool around with you. Come on. Come on, let's get out of here. Please. No. Well, how do you like a blueberry pie? Please. No. Put it right there. All right. Listen, officer. No! You're going down for work. You must house. listen to reason. There's no... Dare I? Durst I? If you don't... Who's going to pay for the pie? We didn't order any pie. Just get up until here. After that, my fine bucko, you're going with me. Thank you, Pyman. Hey! What's this? Hey, listen, what about my blueberry pie? It fell through it as the policeman, but you're going to pay for it. <laughs> I'm going to pay for it. You I will not. If you are so. Well, what happened, Jim? I got hit with a pie. <laughs> yes, well, you I... will. Why, I... Wait a minute, Jim. I think we got another one. You're coming with me. I did not throw the pie. I saw no, you throw please. the pie. No, I, I never did. You can't talk to my friend. You keep right. out of this. No, I saw you throw the pie, throw the pie over there. Don't no, 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 give me that for that. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, my best officer. Oh, you look like Grimpo. No, you <laughs> don't have to <laughs> go. Oh, monsieur, le part des dents, c'est le pas voir, jusque le part des rien. Hey, are we having fun? <laughs> hey, officer, what's yeah. the <laughs> Run, Edward, run. <laughs> Here, you try one. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, the boogeyman. Cribs, old fellow, with my compliments. This is most irregular. Gentlemen, is this your... Oh, no, you don't. So you're one of them. You've been throwing pies, huh? I beg your pardon. Why, you come along with me. No, but officer, I, I, I give you my word, I've never thrown a pace in my life. Judge. Jim, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? That'll get Cribs in a lot of trouble. Or my name's not... William Dalton. Listen, yes. when do I get my pie? Your pie? Yes. You want quick service, eh? Surely, surely. You have it now. <laughs> I asked for blueberry. Mm. Blueberry? Mm. Oh, je ne parle pas de ce soir. Je ne connais rien. Blueberry, monsieur. <laughs> that is raspberry. <laughs> raspberry! Another day. What shall I do in daylight? I am out of sight when it is dark. Oh, for something to drink. I am not so ashamed when I am drunk. 
Heavens, how I tremble. Brandy, Brandy! Take them away, those snakes! How strong they are. Do not kill them. Give them brandy. Poison them with rum. That will be a just punishment. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Hush. Now all is quiet. One girl. It is a beautiful day. Oh, yes, balmy, quite balmy. This reminds me of the time I... Uh, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing, as I was saying, this... Uh, what do you see? What do you see? <laughs> Rats. Rats? Why, there's no rat. Oh, I think I saw one. Feed them rum. What did you say? <laughs> Give the snakes rum. Uh, Feed them rum. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <sighs> It is no crime to purloin eternal sleep from the chemist. Now for the powerful conqueror of all earthly troubles, death. Huh. Stop, man. Don't do anything without logic. Why, this looks like poison. Smells like poison. Mm. It tastes like poison, too. <clears throat> it is poison. It is poison. Who are you, man? What do you want? Can't you let me die in peace? Now, don't change the subject. Don't change the subject. My, oh, my. Oh, friend, take not your life, but mend it. Friend? You know me not. I am a fiend, the ruin of those who love me. Leave me. I'm not here to criticize you, but to help you. Oh, you've been drinking, huh? You're not bad stuff either. <laughs> I'm stuff. dying for a drink. Who are you that takes interest in an unhappy vagabond? Neither my father nor my brother. I am Frederick Healy, the friend of all unfortunates. You are a man, and if a man, a brother. Brother? You troubled yourself without hope. I am a lost soul. Did you say Healy? Frederick Healy, the great philanthropist? Of what use can I be to you? A derelict. The shell of what was once Edward Middleton. Edward Middleton, 888. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I could become of some assistance to you and help restore you to your spot in society from which you have slid. Not bad, huh? For he who helps a fallen brother from the depths is greater than the hero who conquers the world. Merciful heavens. My mother's dying words. I administer the pledge of sobriety to those who would once more become pillars of society. That picture is too bright. It cannot be. You're looking at a man who for 20 years was addicted to the curse of drink. Indeed? No, no, it is too late. It is not too late. I will restore you to the bosom of your family and make a man of you. Here, sit down. Sit down here and sign this. Here. Here, yeah, sign. Heaven grant that the prayer of a poor wretch be heard. You are free. You are a free man. Freedom. 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 Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Posse. Thank you. I'll send this down to headquarters right away. Thank you. That was a lucky escape. I'll get even with that William Dalton for handing me that tie. It was fortunate that I knew the judge, otherwise I'd have had difficulty in getting out of that infernal scrape. And now, for my design on Frederick Healy and company. I think there can be no detection. The signature is perfect. I'll get some well-dressed boy to deliver this check and receive the money. And then I'll be off to the far west, or England. Edward Middleton will receive full blame for this forgery, and how. <laughs> Cripps is a clever fellow. <laughs> Would you like to earn half a dollar? With pleasure, sir. Thomas. Of course. Honestly. I doubt that if he rose in his boat. I have to meet a gentleman precisely at this hour on business at the Pearl Street house. Now go to the mechanics bank for me and present this check. The teller will give you the money. Then come back quickly and I will reward you with a silver dollar. Silver dollar? Back in a flash with a cash.
Have you been following me? Guess I have. Confusion. I understand you've been looking at some timetables. Do you intend to take a vacation? Why don't you mind your own business? I think I will. to know if this was your signature on this check. Oh, no. You know I can write better than that. $5,000. Has it been cashed yet? Just half an hour ago. Oh, my. This is terrible. Who presented my check? Uh, a boy, sir. Boy? Yes, oh. our cashier examined the signature later and doubted if it was genuine. Yeah, well, you rush on back to the bank, see? Anyway, pick up a police officer. I will follow almost immediately. Our action must be prompt. And do not fear the results because I found a horseshoe. <laughs> Ah, my good friend William. Edward Middleton's been asking for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Where is he? Who? Oh, oh, Edward. Well, he's living at my house while his home is being prepared for his return to the village. Oh, thank heaven. Well, I must be going. Well, you, you seem alarmed about something. I'm not alarmed about anything. Yes, I am alarmed. Someone forged my name to a check at the Mechanics Bank. Mechanics Bank? Who cashed the check? A well, boy. A boy? How long ago? Oh, about a half hour ago. Why are you alarmed? Well, I'll tell you, sir. Edward told me the Cribs tried to get him to forge a check while he was under the influence of liquor. A boy? How big a boy? Well, I'm going to say about that. Yeah. I recognize that boy now. I saw Cribs give him the check and heard him tell him to go down to the mechanics bank to cash it. Ah, I can see it all now. We must hurry away to the tombs where I'll get a few officers. There's no time for us to lose. I'm with you, sir, heart and hand. And if I ever get my grip on that old fox again, I'll never let him go. Oh, horror, horror. Cribs persuaded poor Edward to forge that check. I fear for the worst. Get up. Have you seen Cribs? Nope. There's going to be a lot of excitement here today. Have you any news for me? News? William, I've been talking to Dr. Bevan, and he says your sister is much improved. Oh, don't tell me that. I'm in no mood to be trifled with. I do tell you. The doctor said she has moments when she's entirely lucid. You mean she'll know me and will call me by name? Yes. And I'll hear her sweet voice caroling to the sun each early morn? Yes. And she'll take her place with the choir at church? Yes. Thank heaven. Thank heaven. Here she comes now. You sure she's all right? Oh, the cold has blue white may rain. When friends and fortunes call, oh, the cold has blue white may rain. When... Hazel, my dear sister. William, my dear brother. My dear sister. Oh, William, I know you. I can hear you and speak to you. It must be one of our lucid moments. Listen, for I have so much to tell you. Do you remember the old old tree with the hole in it down by Bascom's Corners? Yes, yes. Well, it was while I was a milking the cow, and I saw old Cribs a bearing something. So yesterday I went to the barn and borrowed a hoe from Farmer Williams. And after digging a little while, I found... William, guess what I found? What, girl, what? Concealed in an old tin case was the original will of Edward Middleton's grandfather. No. Giving to his dear grandson full possession of all his property. Unbelievable. So the will on which Cribs acted was a forgery. Where's it now? I buried it right back. Sam, she ain't right yet. Oh, the cold fell with blue white may be. And friends and fortune smile. Oh, the cold fell with blue white may be. Oh, Cribs is on the upper road coming towards town. And I know where he's headed for. The old oak. Hazel. We must hurry. We have no time to lose. Make haste. Right ahead, get up, let's go, let's go. All right, boys, keep out of sight. Hide the horse and carriage. That's where it is. Where is it? Yes. Hazel. Yes. What? Move. If 
found it. Gee, I told you so. He's coming around the mountain. When he comes. Oh, is he coming around the mountain? When he comes. All right, we're ready for him. Now for ambush. Uh-oh. You hide also, or we scare him. Tied the horse and buggy at the crossroads. All is safe. I am certain that no one has observed me. What would you like to bet? I beg your pardon? What would you like to bet? Ah, it is nothing but the wind. And now for the will. And from this fatal evidence, I shall at last be secure. Powers of mystery. The earth is freshly turned. The will has gone. Rifle there has got his own. Boom. For shame. Oil. Come, we must catch him. Hey, we're going the wrong way. Forward, men. We can't let him escape. Yeah, enough of this, Papoon. Let's go. Come. Stand back. Surrender. We have you outnumbered. Wouldn't surprise me to find he had a Negro in the woodpile. Terror kill? Yes, sir, boss. <laughs> what I tell you, what I tell you. <laughs> Give me the will, whoever has it. Here it is, and you're not going to get it, you nasty man. Yeah. Well, that concludes my business, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> Unhappy wretch, why did you do it? Revenge and a want of more money. With my heart's deepest, blackest feeling, I hated Edward Middleton's father. In early life, he detected me in an act of vile atrocity. And since that time, I have hated him with a feeling that has existed even beyond the grave, descending to his noble son. What about the check? Yes. It was I who forged that. Clever of me, wasn't it? Oh, heaven forgive me for ever thinking it was Edward. By cunning means, which we would call hypocrisy, I wormed myself into the favor of the old grandfather, who, on his dying bed, delivered into my hands all his papers. I forged a new will, and I... I won't say another word until I see my lawyer. Oh, come, repentance is good for the soul. No, I lived a villain, and a villain I will die. Officers, do your duty.